This is the story of two young guys, bound in friendship and in destiny. Ronald and Skinny, as often happened, went out for a picnic together to spend the day in the neighborhood countryside. Suddenly, Ronald pulled a couple of little plums out of his basket and gave one of them to his friend. Mmm, delicious. Deliciously lethal. <laughs> Note how the slow motion makes everything more epic. The boy's corpse stayed there for hours, enveloped by blades of grass, until all of a sudden, something happened. A new spark was instilled in Skinny's body, reduced abruptly to a skeleton, and slammed him inside Ronald's wardrobe, cursed to watch over his friend for the rest of his days. Or at least until today, when our story starts. Morning, sunshine. Hi, Nat. Forgive me, but I didn't sleep very well tonight. Are you sure you really want to talk to him? I have no other choice. He'll have a heart attack if you ask me, and he'll end up keeping you company in the wardrobe. I really hope not. Do you know where Ronald's gone? Everybody left a couple of hours ago, but I don't know where they went. They were all very nervous. I don't know why exactly. It'll be the usual sale at the mall. The Mother Superior must have straightened them up as usual. When will you stop eating those things? Would you care for some, maybe? How many times do I have to tell you that I'm allergic to plums? Just looking at them, I'm getting hives. Man, you don't have any skin at all. And anyway, they're nuts. Otherwise, why would Ronald have given me this name? He probably just wanted to be... alternative. You're a lost cause. Hasn't Ronald spoken yet? You should know that by now. He hasn't said a word since you died in front of his eyes. I don't want his soul to be damned forever. If that stubborn guy won't open his lips for himself, I'll take steps to loosen his tongue. Don't hurt him too much. I have to run to the bathroom. All this excitement loosened my bladder. I like this room. Start here then. Put the little pet in the van. In the meantime, I'll prepare the boxes in the living room. And don't do it like last time when you got hit by a car while loading the stuff. There are colored books on the walls. But you don't even know which side a book opens on. I like colored books. Do you know what I don't like? Working for free to pay for broken things marked fragile. Do you understand? This carpet. It's soft as a marshmallow. I like marshmallows. <laughs> I should have listened to my dad when he told me to be a florist. Ah, I really needed a shower. Boss, it won't open. Let's keep working on the ground floor then. In the meantime, I'll ask the lady about a key. I'm afraid this damn move will take longer than expected. Move? And what should I do now? I'm coming, I'm coming. Apologies for the delay. I was late with a tutorial of another video game. Players are not what they used to be anymore. Let's uh, cut to the chase. I'm here to explain the game controls to you. Well, I'm not interested. I'm not asking you, Skinny. Let your player decide. Okay, okay. I just hope you don't miss something while playing. All I'm asking is that you take a look inside that green satchel. I'll take care of it, as long as you leave us alone after. Ma, there's gold in this here bag. Ah, uh, no. It's just pyrite. Don't be fooled by appearances. It could be more useful than you can imagine. See you soon. The maximum displeasure you can give to a gold miner. Hi, Bear. What's new? Nothing. 
since I'm forced to stare at the sink. Hope I'll be luckier in the new house. Do you want me to give you your happy pills? How many times do I have to tell you that I don't need them? Besides, I have my duck. She makes me feel good. You have to understand the bear is convinced he's married to the duck. How do you feel about this move? I hope I don't end up in a bathroom in front of another dripping sink, or I'll go completely crazy. You better find a way to get out of this house and into that van. What are you waiting for? Did you see Ronald? If you mean naked, yes. Every single day. And it's not a pretty sight. Come on, Bear. You know very well what I meant. Early this morning. Usual time. He was a little down in the dumps. I mean, more than ever. But nothing particularly suspicious. Have you had any other hallucinations since the last time? Luckily not, Mr. Hunter. Bear, I'm skinny. I'm just messing with you. You're the little wuss without a backbone. I would argue that claim. Now I have to go, Bear. I guess so. Bones off! I've seen things you wouldn't believe. Count yourself lucky. I don't know what's more disgusting, this or the hair removal strips of Ronald's mother. I sense trouble. That must be the van of the moving company. I absolutely have to find a way to get in there before they finish and leave. The Murrays are really very nice people. When we were children, Ronald and I often played with Cooper, but after the divorce, he went to live with his mother, one of the countless houses of the Wayne family. Mr. Wayne is not often seen here in the city. He never stops by to talk with anyone. What happened to my wardrobe? I can't be separated from my wardrobe. It's a matter of life or death. Well, I mean, you know. Good, the batteries seem to be charged. I'm only missing the bit. disaster I made with some apricot marmalade years ago. I never understood how Ronald's parents could think it was Sigmund Freud's face. Do you think this is the right moment to play games? I suggest you avoid careless moves if you value your skin. I already lost mine a while ago. And who the hell are you? some respect, stupid bony human. You're looking at the future conqueror of the world. <laughs> Only dumb characters in this game. Don't laugh, that goes for you too. Jumping Jiminy. Not me. I can't jump. I have no legs. And my name's not Jiminy. I meant, where did you come from? From under the hardwood floor. I was stuck there for years, but now I'm finally free and will have my revenge. <laughs> Who do you want to take revenge on? The world. I have nobody to take revenge on in particular, so I will take my vengeance out on the world. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Listen, not to curb your enthusiasm, but you look pretty harmless to me. What? I mean, you don't look blessed with any particular abilities, or of great intellect, or any intellect. You can't expect to get very far without a well-constructed plan. Ah, you're right. Think about it, okay? Who would be your nemesis? The Swiffer? I don't know any Swiffer. Forget it. I have to go. Bye. This contains the ashes of Grandma. May she rest in peace. I confess I've always been curious.
An ending so unexpected. Ah, uh, Herm, just another small interruption to tell you that it may sometimes be possible to pick up the same object more than once. Another belated circumstance where you show your negligence, but thanks for the tip. As they always say, you never know what might come in handy. I could never chew at all, even if I had an eternity in front of me. And I fear I do. What a dazzling smile. Now I finally have the courage to tell you. A while back, I skipped dinner. Please, Grandma, don't look at me that way. Stop glaring at me, all judgy-eyed. Okay, you win. I'll go and get a sandwich right now. You'd like it. I know where this is going. With this trick, we lost four relatives and eight of the cat's nine lives. That critter won't get closer to the living room, even under torture. No way, those two guys are still down there. Have you seen boss? I opened the door. Bravo, well done. But now let's go, it's lunchtime. I like eating. Then come on, move. What a blow.